witches don't get stitches. They get little children and then turn them into little animals on Film Threat Reviews. Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zorina Kitt. Today we are reviewing Roald Dahl's The Witches on HBO Max. Based on his book, The Witches, it's about a young boy and his grandmother, and they have a run-in with a coven of witches and their leader. It's directed by Robert Zemeckis, uh, stars Jazir Bruno, Chris Rock, Octavia Spencer, Anne Hathaway, Stanley Tucci, and again, it's on HBO Max. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I, I walked in not thinking I was going to like it, but um, it, it I actually did like it. What did you think, Zarina? I liked it, too. I li actually liked it very much. Yeah. Um, it is based on uh, Dahl's book, children's book. Now, he's always had kind of a darker sense of humor. Uh, he's behind Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda. So there's definitely, um, not sinister, but definitely uh, he ups the level a little bit on the on the, the scare factor. It's not so sanitized. Um, and this film has been... Um, made previously with Angelica Houston as the Grand High Witch. This was, I think, back in the 90s. Um, and that's why this version is called Roald Dolls the Witches, just to distinguish itself from the other one that was just simply called The Witches. Well, it, there's a lot of comparisons that will inevitably be made because the one starring Angelica Houston really was a, a favorite. Uh, but the differences are that Robert Zemeckis in today's times, 2020, uses a lot of CGI. Back then, it was practical effects. Like, And Jim Henson, it was actually Jim Henson's final film that he worked on. So the 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 uh, the witches they they spent a lot of time in makeup and getting all that stuff done on them whereas Anne Hathaway's just basically CGI uh when she turns into a witch with the joker mouth uh with the mice here they're 100% CGI back then the it was a mixture of real mice and some puppetry so there is some charm when you're using practical effects and puppetry. There's definitely a charm to that film, which the new one doesn't have, because sometimes CGI work is a little too clean and too slick, and you just lose some of that heart a little bit. And I do, I do feel that this movie was lacking a little bit of that. But in the end, it was still a fun romp. It's sort of like if you liked the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory version uh, with Johnny Depp better than the one with Gene Wilder, then you'll probably like this version better than the yeah. Angelica Houston version. Yeah, I think uh, I liked a lot. I thought I liked it a little bit better than you did, especially the special effects. I, I'm I'm not one to gravitate toward overly uh, CG, you know, characters and, and storytelling. But in this one, it just seemed to work. And I think it's just the fact that I think Robert Zemeckis is putting himself in that position to be kind of the expert and the artist, so to speak, that that can really deal with these surreal um, computer animation. Um, you know, I mean, I loved, I loved Anne Hathaway and the witches and when their mouths opened and when they transformed into their true forms. It, it was like, this is just, to me... Um, you know, it's that blend between being real and being surreal and cartoonish. And I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I also enjoyed the story a lot, too. I mean, it's so dark. It, it, is, uh, it is, you know, I, I'd say it's scary for small kids, but for yeah. other kids, yeah. you know, who, who are into like Goosebumps type stories. This is, uh, you know, in a way, this is the origins of Goosebumps. And I really found myself uh, liking this movie when I normally don't like uh, these kinds of movies personally. Well, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying I didn't like this movie because I, I actually did like it way more than I thought I would. I just, it's just that I, I felt like the, the first one was such a classic that it, that it needed to be addressed mm -hmm. if you saw that and are planning to see this one, because there are, there are fundamental differences, uh, including the fact that it's the book is very white. I mean, it's, it's set in Norway and in England. And <laughs> so the first movie was very white. This one uh, smartly really updates it to reflect 
today's times, even though it's set in 1967, Alabama, uh, but we've got Octavia Spencer as our lead grandma. So yeah. she's the grandma, the little boy is black. Um, uh, some of the witches are black. And so it. Uh, Chris Rock is the narrator here. Yeah. So it definitely updates it to something that is more relatable to the world as a whole. And that I appreciate it. And also the yeah. ending is very much true to the book, whereas the Angelica Houston version was not, it was a very different <laughs> ending to the point where the author did want to take his name off of yeah. the movie. Yeah. So Chris Rock, just here, he's the first voice you hear. It, it, it's striking. It catches you off guard. But to me, that's, it was like, well, okay. This is interesting because uh, I don't expect um, to hear not only Chris Rock but also um, his his dialect, so to speak. In, yeah, in yeah. Um, and then you, you go to the ending. You know, I I hadn't seen the original, so uh, the, I'm coming to this story fresh. I love the ending. I, I love the fact that um, without saying anything about it, it it's not your typical Disney ending. Yes. And, uh, yeah. You know, and I I like. I like just the acceptance of you know the, the events of the film, uh, and but to me, what what really carries me all the way through is just this sense of adventure, um, the sense of magic, the sense of evil magic, and um, you know th that's that's you know when I was a kid, that's kind of the way I liked my my children's stories to be told, just a little dark, you know, maybe yeah, we're I just mean, too much uh, trying to make kids too happy. Um, I was a little surprised happily so when um octavia spencer and the kids leave the hotel room with nothing but a cat left to look at a rat in a glass jar knowing full well where that was going to lead and just going wow they went there this yeah. would happen in a disney movie so i do have to hand it to the i mean but but that's also the author that's that is the that's th those are the the types of uh, darker elements that the author has in general. And it was nice that it stayed true to that. I yeah. appreciated that. I mean, even Snow White would be considered kind of a scary movie. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Disney at that time really embraced, you know, the, the yeah. idea of we need to scare kids in real ways. Yeah, but they don't do that anymore. Come on, we all no. saw Ivan the Terrible or Ivan the <laughs> Ivan the, the gorilla movie that you and yeah. I One and only Ivan. The one and only Ivan. Thank you. Well, yeah. we both know how we felt about that movie when I said Ivan the Terrible, but and it's got an amazing cast too. Um, you know, Octavia Spencer. I, I'm more and more impressed the more I see her. Uh, Anne Hathaway just has fun, and then of course there's Stanley Tucci, um, <laughs> who is just a joy to always see on screen. Yeah. I always feel that if Octavia Spencer is in a film that it's probably going to be good because I always feel her choices are really thoughtful. Yeah. And and this is a film where in the second half, she carries this film virtually on her own as an actor because that's when the CG is at its most. That's when... The kids are gone. She's got three mice that she's, you know, walking around the hotel with. And she has to interact with them. So pretty much it's Octavia by herself. And uh, I, I thought she did a, a, a great job. All right. So uh, you loved it. Uh, you you admired a lot about it. Maybe not as uh, much as the original, but uh, loved it nonetheless. So I'm going to guess uh, an eight. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's an eight. I, I feel like... Um, it's just, it, it is, a, it's 2020. I mean, we don't practical effects and all that stuff that that was then, this is now. I did enjoy the transition, the upgrade uh, that happened on the, on the technological side. And I, I think that you maybe even enjoyed it much more than I did, but I don't think you would have given it a nine or an eight and a half. I think you just gave it an eight, but for different reasons. Yeah, an eight, definitely. Um, again, you know, anytime you can get me to like a genre that I'm not particularly fond of, uh, good job. We don't see a lot of Robert Zemeckis, but you do get the sense that he is probably on his own just trying to perfect uh, CG effects in movies. Uh, I mean, he's, his entire career is almost based on that, and I think this is a good example of that as well. I do think that HBO Max is a good home for it as well. The theatrical, I, it's a little hard to say how that would have done, only because the 
like you said, it might be a little too scary for some of the younger kids and not scary enough for some of the older kids. So, uh, but very entertaining for adults. Yeah, so. I, I think it would do well in the theaters. I honestly do. I, I, as much as we say that it's too scary, I think people want that. I think people have always wanted that and no one just wants to say it out loud. <laughs> So you're yeah. saying it. All right. Alan. Yeah, there we go. We're, we're being avant-garde here. Okay. Well, with that, uh, be sure to like, subscribe to the Film Threat YouTube channel. Comment below. Uh, go out and see it on HBO Max. And uh, let us know what you thought of Roll Dolls, The Witches. And with that, let's get out of here.